One year ago, we launched our very first episode of Sports Card Investor. And during that year, together, we have made sports card history. But what's even more exciting are the great plans we have for the year ahead. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello. Hello. Well, hello. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode. Hello. Sports card investors, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for what has been an absolutely amazing year. Because it was just one year ago that the first episode of Sports Card Investor launched. And it launched to no audience, to no following, to no subscribers. No one knew me in the sports card world. I was brand new and just had some thoughts that I wanted to share. When I launched my first video just over a year ago, it got 130 views in its first week. And over 100 of those views were from my friends on Facebook because I posted the video to Facebook. And none of them knew anything about sports cards. They were just checking out the video because they thought, you know, you know, I want to see what Jeff's up to. So they watched a couple minutes of the video. I had no following, none. And here we sit one year later, exactly one year later, and listen to this. We now have almost 32,000 subscribers on YouTube, another 10,000 that listen to the podcast version of the show. We have almost 13,000 followers on Instagram, almost 5,000 on Twitter. We have 8,000 members of our Facebook groups across all of our Facebook groups. And we have another 8,000 in our Discord chat server. Our website gets 100,000 visitors a month. Absolutely incredible. And our membership program and our Market Movers data platform, which we launched in February, have taken off like wildfire. It has been an absolutely amazing year, all starting from zero, and all of that happened with almost zero money being spent on marketing. That was entirely organic growth. And it is all thanks to you. It is thanks to the fact that you are passionate about sports cards from an investing standpoint. You love the hobby, you love collecting, and you like the idea of the dollars and cents behind sports cards, and you wanted to be part of the community. You wanted to be part of the community to help people out, to consume the content that's out there, and to be part of an absolutely wonderful, wonderful hobby. All of this is because of you. And sincerely, sincerely thank you for what has been an absolutely amazing year. So I want to take a couple of minutes to reflect back on the year, tell you some of my favorite moments from the year and how some of this happened, and then also tell you about what's next. Because we've got some amazing plans for the year ahead. If you thought year one of Sports Card Investor was good, you haven't seen anything coming yet. All right. So how did this all happen? I got back into the hobby a few years ago when my son Reeves wanted to start buying football cards. And I had tons of cards from when I was a kid. I was a huge collector, but had lost touch with the hobby for such a long time. So when Reeves wanted to start to buy some cards, I started to get back into it by getting some cards for him. And I immediately realized, whoa, everything's different now. The hobby is actually liquid. You can actually buy and sell cards on sites like eBay and all kinds of other online websites very, very quickly, which makes it 
dynamic for an investor. You can get in and out and, and you know, get your money out when you want to. I also realized grading was a game changer, something that didn't exist when I was a kid, but the fact that you can now certify the quality and authenticity of a card, game changing. And then the manufacturers have gotten so much smarter with serial numbered cards and short print cards to, to build scarcity into the marketplace. And I saw all of these things and so many more. And I said, this is gonna be huge. Sports cards from an investing standpoint is going to be huge. This is gonna be the next big thing. But back then, I don't, very few people realized it. I immediately went out and started to try to consume content. That's the first thing. Whenever I'm going into a new business area or a new business field, the very first thing I always want to do is go out and consume content, see who's talking about it, see what articles are being written about it, see what else is out there. And there were a lot of good shows and podcasts about sports cards from a hobbyist standpoint. I loved listening to the, for example, Mojo Breaks podcast called The Hype. Great podcast from, an, from, a, from a hobby standpoint, talking about new releases and all that kind of stuff, but there wasn't much talk about dollars and cents. The only two content sources I could find which really covered it more were the Breaker Culture podcast. Uh, Ty from Breaker Culture would cover it on some episodes and sometimes on his website, but had a pretty big, big variety of other type of content as well. Uh, shout out to Ty. I consumed his podcast. I went back and listened to every single episode uh, when I was first getting back into this. And then on Amazon, I found this book called The Modern Baseball Card Collector by Jeff Huang. This book is from 2014. So this book is from way before the hobby got popular again. But it was the only piece of literature that I could find anywhere about sports card investing. So I bought this book, I read every single page of it, and I, I, I took, look, I took literally just crazy pages of notes. Like I, I took all kinds of notes about, you know, everything I read in that book. And actually it's, it's a great book. And even though now it's six years out of date, uh, a lot of the theories still apply today. Um, and so I loved that, but I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted to read more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to consume more. And there wasn't a lot out there. There'd be occasional posts on blowout forums about investing and, you know, that type of thing. But it was, it was scattered. It was mixed. It was kind of far, be, far and few between. So I said, I'm going to create the content that I would want to consume. I said, I believe there are other people out there that are going to start looking at sports cards from an investing standpoint. And I believe that if I start creating this content, that maybe a community will, will form around it. I also, by the way, at that time, was very frustrated with the lack of good online tools to track sports card prices. Trying to use eBay completed items gives you very incomplete information and, and not easy to process. And there were other websites at the time, but frankly, their user interfaces were bad. They were, they were somewhat outdated and none of it really made it easy to track what was actually happening for price changes in the hobby. And so I thought in the back of my mind, I wanna also build my own software tool, which of course would later become Market Movers. But I decided first, let me start with the show and let me start with the Sports Card Investor website with just some articles on it to see if I'm right that other people have passion about this. And if I can validate the market by growing the show, then that shows me that I was right about the market. And then there will be the opportunity to build the data tool and to come out with the membership and other things like that in the future. So I started by, built, by putting together my first video. And my first video I put out on July the 20th of 2019. It was called Why Now? is the time to invest in sports cards. The video, it was honestly kind of lame. <laughs> in fact, let's take a little clip of that video right now. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Sports Card Investor. This is gonna be a fun journey, and I am happy to have you along for the ride. My name is Jeff Wilson, and I am a avid sports collector and a investor who is taking a data-driven look at how to invest successfully 
in sports cards. So definitely not, you know, not the same production quality, uh, not the same level of enthusiasm in my presentation that I have today, but it was a start. And as I mentioned earlier, that video, if you took my friends out of the view count, it got less than 30 views in the first week. And that same day, by the way, I launched a second video called the best sports card to invest in today. That video got 38 views in its first seven days, 38 views in its first seven days. It wasn't until my fifth video that I started to gain traction and I'll tell you what happened. And this, by the way, is a good marketing tip for you YouTubers out there. The, the many, many people who have come along uh, in recent months starting to do sports card investing shows and whether you're doing that or something else, one really good marketing idea is to try to get your content in the news cycle with whatever is going on and is popular at that point in time. And so my fifth video, I went to the National Sports uh, Collectors Convention in Chicago last uh, end of July and August. And I had no media pass. No one knew who I was. I, I, I had to buy a normal pass. I had no permission to really do anything, but I brought my tripod and I brought my iPhone and I set up in the corner of the room on the first night of the national of the national convention, and I did a video. I did a video uh, showing what I had seen that day, talking about what I had heard that day, showing some clips of different dealer booths, and I put the video out on YouTube that night. That video got over 1,500 views in its first three days because what was happening? People were at home who wished they could have gone to the national. And so they were searching for the national on YouTube to see if there was any videos or coverage of the national and mine popped up. And as soon as I got those 1500 views on that video, then my view counts on my first few videos started to go up and my subscribers started to go up because people saw me and they saw what I was about. And they're like, oh, this is kind of interesting. We wanna watch some of this other guy's stuff. You know, there's a lot of things like that that happens along the way that, that you know, kind of got us to the next level and the next level. I could do a whole show or a whole series of shows about the business side of this and the marketing side of this that has made this really successful. And I will, I will, because I'm excited to announce in the next few months that I'm going to start my own business and marketing YouTube channel, totally separate from sports cards. But I am going to give stories and reflections on the 14 different businesses that I've started over the last 20 years and lessons that I've learned from each that have allowed me to do things like sports card investor and ratchet it up as quickly as I've been able to do. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited about that. We're a few months away, but I'm really excited to share that content with you as well on a separate channel when that is ready to go. You know, at that national, I did have a funny thing happen. I was recognized by one person. I had one guy come up to me, his name was Matt from Collect the Game Cards. And Matt came up to me at the National and he goes, hey, are you that sports card investor guy on YouTube? And I'm like, I am. And of course I had only put out four episodes prior to that. And he's like, yeah, I, I saw your episodes. I really like what you're doing. And it, you know, you're taking an interesting direction. Of course I had almost no subscribers. He was one of my very first. It was a total coincidence that I ran into him at the National. But it's funny to think now about how kind of innocent of an exchange that was and how now, this next time I'm able to go back to the National, how incredibly different in such an awesome way it's gonna be with so many folks from this community. I cannot wait to meet so many of you in person and thank you personally for all the support that you've given this show over the last year. It's gonna be awesome and I cannot wait till we actually get to the point where we can have a show in person together. Um, it was my 11th video about a month later where I really caught fire with some of my predictions. That 11th video, I did a video called Sports Cards Under $10 That Could Become $100 Plus. And in that video, I, I made the case that you should be buying right now backup quarterbacks for older quarterbacks in the NFL who could be uh, an injury risk. And in that show, I told the viewers to buy Teddy Bridgewater because Drew Brees was about to turn 40. And, and if he went down with an injury, Teddy Bridgewater would be in an awesome position to shine and then maybe to get a starting job somewhere else next year. 
And it was also in that video that I said Ben Roethlisberger may go down with an injury, so buy Mason Rudolph. And I said Cam Newton may go down with an injury, so consider the backup quarterbacks on Carolina. Sure enough, a week later, Teddy, you know, we had Mason Rudolph starting. We had the Carolina quarterback starting. It, you know, we had uh, we had Bridgewater starting soon after that. Everything from that show seemed to come true, and. There were a lot of people who watched that show who made a lot of money, who made a lot of money on the back of my predictions. That started to really ignite the fire. I've had some, I, I've had some fortune along the way of being able to make some good predictions and all of that kind of helped fuel it. But more than anything, more than anything, it has been the community. It has been you. It has been your support, your enthusiasm and passion. And I am just simply here as a person to help fuel that on. I am simply here at, here to give it a platform, to give it a home, and to give it a voice. It is your passion, your love for sports cards and, and looking at sports cards from an investing standpoint that has really helped build this all. You know, I arrived at the right moment. I saw that this was gonna be big and it became big. I built that community and by the way, the community a lot of it came from your own suggestions. I read the YouTube comments. I hear what you guys talk about. And it was it was commenters and people who watched the show who suggested you should start a Discord. You should start a Facebook group. So those suggestions were organic. They came from you. They came from the community. Um, I had some really cool things happen along the way. My coolest moment from the last year was in January when I got an email out of the blue from Dr. James Beckett, as in Beckett, as in Beckett Media and Beckett Grading, the founder, Dr. James Beckett, emailed me out of the blue and invited me to a private dinner at his house in February uh, with him and with several influential, super influential members of the sports card community, people high up, uh, people at Panini and Beckett uh, the founder, Tim, the founder of ComC, uh, lots of really prominent people were in that room. It was awesome. I mean, that was like, I was like, wow. Like to go from zero, to go from zero last July to sitting at a private dinner with many of the leaders in the sports card community and Dr. Beckett himself, who is an absolute legend. The 12-year-old the boy inside me was freaking out because when I was a kid and I subscribed to every Beckett price guide and couldn't wait to the day I got that in my hands every month to go through and see how my cards had changed in value, to be sitting, having dinner and sharing, sharing conversation with a guy who started that, that was pretty sweet. And since that time, you would not believe the number of high profile people and celebrities who have reached out to me saying they're fans of the show. It's incredible. It's incredible how many people watch this show and how many people, famous, famous people are getting into sports cards, which makes me more confident than ever, more confident than ever that the market is only gonna get hotter and it's only gonna go up from here. There are a lot of people that help me along this journey. A lot of people. None of this, none of this I could have done on my own. And I owe a lot of people thank yous. First of all, first and foremost, I want to thank my family. My wife, Kim, who knows me as an entrepreneur, and she's an entrepreneur herself, a very successful one. And so she gives me the leeway to go do crazy things. And starting this show, and not only starting this show, but putting tens of thousands of dollars into sports cards in the early days was back then pretty crazy. And she gave me the, the runway to do it. And not just the runway, but the, the, she wanted me to follow my passion. And I, I owe her greatly for that. So thank you, Kim. And thank you to my family. Uh, Reeves, my son, who you've seen on the show several times. Some of my favorite memories are opening up sports cards with Reeves. And I have two younger children, Harrison and Amelia, who are starting to get to sports cards age. So don't be surprised in the upcoming few years if Harrison and Amelia make their debut uh, for occasional episodes of Sports Card Investor. 
Um, my team at 352. I own a digital agency called 352. Uh, we do a lot of innovation work, growth work. And as part of that, we do marketing, build software, build websites. I have an awesome team there. Nick, great designer, helped me with the sports card investor brand. Peter J and Blake helped build the very first version of the website. Brad has been absolutely an awesome developer. He architected most of the Market Movers data platform. Rich, uh, awesome member of my leadership team, helped Brad as well. Uh, Logan, many, many others at 352 have participated and really helped build uh, market movers along the way. Thanks to Joe Davis of GotBaseballCards.com, who, along with Austin Brown, appeared on several episodes and provided me with some great guidance along the way. Um, in December, because the show was starting to go really well and I was starting to think about gearing up for my membership program, I was able to hire my first couple of employees. I hired Mark, who manages my website today. Um, I hired Brad, who uh, who helped with some of my initial social media, another Brad, and my good friend Don, uh, who's been a big champion of this the whole way through. He's helped me out with a lot of strategy for all of this. Um, uh, uh, another friend of mine, Pete, the same. And then Jeremy from Atlanta Cards. Atlanta Cards on Instagram. He's a great follow on Instagram, Atlanta Cards. Met him at a card show in Atlanta, and he gave me some really savvy feedback on how to structure my membership program and, and my Market Movers data tool to make it as best possible. So awesome to him. Uh, in February, I was able to, to hire more people, and that's when I brought in Charles, who is my video editor, and Charles made over the whole show, did an amazing job. He, first of all, changed out my equipment. I was previously recording all of my shows on an iPad, and then he changed me out for a better camera setup, which obviously you see here today, better audio, better set, all that type of thing. And he pumped up the editing of the shows to make them better and better. Charles has been very, very impactful to the growth of the show. I also hired uh, Tyler the Hammer um, and, uh, and Kelly. Tyler's my director of operations and Kelly is my director of marketing. They've done an absolutely fabulous job. More recently, I've hired Parker. Um, he is, uh, you'll be seeing him in the future. Uh, he recently joined the team full time. And uh, I've also gotten a lot of help from Tyler T.M. Encott. Uh, you may know him as that on Discord. We also affectionately call him Teapot or the other Luca. And he has been awesome with his help uh, with the Market Movers data platform, really getting that going and adding cards to it. By the way, when we launched Market Movers, we had about 600 cards that we were tracking. We are now around 8,000. And it is on the back of Tyler uh, that a lot of that has happened. So thank you very much, Tyler, for, for doing that. Um, I've recently hired, I've recently expanded my development team. I've hired a project manager, Erica, developers, Marcelo and Tudor, technical advisor and Aaron, and they are all helping to continue to, to build out the Market Movers data platform and make it even better, add new stuff like crazy, which we've been doing. Uh, the Discord, I have an amazing team that's moderating my Discord group and they have done it all volunteer just because they love the community, they want the community to build. Shout out to Card Optics, who's been an amazing admin, Kobe White, Bogey79, Mr. Clutch, Slewfoot, Cruise Supply, Cole Johnson, again, Tyler, TM Encott, um, and uh, others who helped out in the early stages like 818 Hype Plug, Posty and Glizzy Star um, have all really helped get the Discord going. And I have an equally amazing group of moderators on my Facebook groups. A uh, shout out to Ziggy No, who you've seen on the channel before. Ziggy is an awesome dude and has done an amazing job with the Facebook groups. Uh, Sean Risher, also a really good guy, doing a lot of great stuff in the sports card world. Uh, Jeremy, Michael, Cody, people who love sports cards are doing awesome stuff. Uh, Stefan, Matthew, Themen. Uh, and others who have helped out moderate the Facebook groups along the way, those guys are just doing amazing things as well. Um, with all of those people behind me, we are continuing to change the game. And this next year is gonna be even more amazing. If you thought that growth was impressive, if you thought those numbers were impressive, if you liked the communities and you liked the membership program, then sit down because the next year is gonna be even better. You better buckle up with where we're going. So first of all, I have ramped up investment considerably into my Market Movers data platform. 
it is getting better and better each week by leaps and bounds. It was just a couple of weeks ago that I launched the My Collection feature. And in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be significantly expanding that feature to allow you, first of all, to add any card, not just cards within our 8,000 card database, but soon you'll be able to add any card within My Collection. Uh, and you'll also be able to track everything you've sold as well. So you can not only see what your current collection is worth, but you can actually keep track of your financial progress with your collection over time as you have sold things from it. Um, we're also adding new features like price alerts, which is gonna launch next week, uh, which is going to alert you uh, on your mobile device, you know, by email, that type of thing, whenever a card hits a particular price point. So maybe, maybe that's something you set up for cards you're looking to sell or cards you're looking to buy. And when a card hits a particular price point, you're getting an alert about it. So all kinds of really, really cool innovation we have on the horizon, that's just the beginning. And that innovation is gonna be coming fast and furious in the months ahead. Um, we're also, in addition to making the Market Movers platform even better, we're making the membership even better with new things that we're gonna be adding to that in the months ahead. And this show, even for those of you who aren't members, this show is going to get better and better. We are gonna be adding more content, more content in the upcoming months. We're gonna start doing sip and rip happy hours, live happy hours, where me and my sports card investor team are gonna be opening up packs, chatting with the audience and going live while enjoying some cool, frosty beverages. Uh, and hopefully you can do the same. It's gonna be our sip and rip happy hours. I'm looking forward to doing those. But perhaps the biggest news of all is that all of this will soon be done from our brand new Sports Card Investor Studios in Midtown Atlanta. I have opened up a brand new studio. It is almost ready and it will debut for members. It will debut this upcoming Wednesday during our member live stream. And for everybody else, it will debut during the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020, which is starting in about a week and a half. This is an awesome studio. Uh, we have three different sets that we can now do shows from, that we can go live from. Uh, the first one is, uh, you see it here, behind me is a first of its kind sealed wax wall. This is gonna be filled with sealed wax. It's gonna be awesome. We might even pull some packs off of that to rip from time to time on shows. Um, we've also got an amazing Jordan painting, uh, Jordan, uh, which is gonna be a backdrop for, for some of the shows as well by Jay Geeker Art. Uh, and by the way, Jan, uh, who is part of Jay Geeker Art, is part of my membership program and good friends, uh, great, great dude, awesome, awesome artist, and it's great to have him as part of the membership program. And then also another amazing piece of art from JPO Art. Uh, John painted this amazing sports card investor uh, backdrop for our shows. It is awesome. And John, by the way, of JPO Art is also a member of our membership program. So it is so cool to have these folks as members and have them contributing all of this, this whole studio, uh, is, it's going to be amazing and it's going to allow us to take all of this content that we're producing for you to the next level. It's going to be an amazing, amazing year ahead and it's going to kick off with the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020 in a week and a half, an event that is like no other in the history of the sports card hobby. It is going to be five straight nights of live streaming and bringing in dealers from around the country to do special promotions and to show their cards. We've got special guests, we've got giveaways and free breaks every single night. We're bringing in some of the biggest names in breaking to give away free breaks for people who are watching on the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020. All of that fun starts next Wednesday, July the 29th. And if you haven't registered yet, it's free. And just go to my website, sportscardinvestor.com and click on the virtual 2020 to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored. I am truly honored and humble to be sitting here in front of you today, one year into this show and to have seen the absolutely amazing growth and the amazing community that we have built. I thank you so very much, so very much from the bottom of my heart. And I cannot wait to see what we are able to build together in the next year.
Thank you, everybody. Take care.